I don't know. Uh, hallelujah. I'm going to talk about God is unorthodox. God is unorthodox. God is a God of variety. He's a God of surprises. He is a God that you just can't put in a box. You just can't put him in a box. You, he, he, he can meet us in our needs in the most unexpected ways. How many have found that to be the case? God, that's the way God is. You can't put him in a We put him in a box and, unless God does it this certain way. It ain't going to happen. Let me tell you, he's a God of surprises. And he'll move in so unexpected ways that he'll meet our needs. Amen? Whatever they might be. In Isaiah 55, 8, 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We're here. We put a lot of emphasis on how smart we are or how many scriptures we know or how long we've been walking with the Lord. Well, let me tell you, we're here. God is way up here, way up here. And he's, he got things planned before we even think about what we're going to do. He's already got things worked out in, on our behalf. I believe that. My thoughts are your, not your thoughts, the Lord says. They're higher than the heavens above you. It says in Romans 11.33, it says, How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways are past finding out. You can't even figure it out. Our unbelief can limit God from moving in new and exciting ways in our Christian walk. We quickly forget where God has brought us from and how he did it, how he saved us in a unique way. We forget God's dealt with each one of us in a unique way. And as we're walking with him, we forget where he brought us from. We need to see that God can work in unexpected ways, in, un in, in unusual ways to meet whatever situation we face in our life. The children of Israel forgot how God had supernaturally delivered them from Egypt. This kept them from entering into the promised land for 40 years. Only Joshua and Caleb entered in. It says in Psalm 78, 41, Yea, they turned their back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them out of the enemy. He came, they came across giants. Well, they forgot that God supernaturally delivered them through, through miracles and through the Passover and delivered them to enter, to get out of Egypt land, to enter into the promised land. Well, then they faced giants. And they limited God's ability to work in that situation. We limit God's ability. Oh, God saved me back then, but can God help me make the utility bills this, this month? Not $13 ones. Not $13 ones. Amen. Cable television bill. Oh, I heard one preacher said, how much burden do we have for missions if our cable television bill is more than what we give to missions every month? Woo! Lord, help me. God can be very unorthodox. What's unorthodox means? It means contrary to what is usual, traditional, or accepted. God will not be put in a box. Our orthodox ways will not hinder his unorthodox ways of accomplishing his purpose in the world. Let me read that again. God will not be put in a box. Our orthodox ways will not hinder his unorthodox ways of accomplishing his purpose in the world. In Job 5, 9, it says, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Isaiah 40, 28 says, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is there weary, there is no searching of his understanding. Our preconceived notions and our orthodox mentality can hinder us from receiving from God. God got to do it this certain way. If it's God not doing this this certain way, then it must not be God. And it doesn't matter how much of the scripture that you know, because sometimes, and oh, I'm going to be called a heretic on this, God can do things outside of his word, but it still lines up with the word. 
Is that right? Back then, they didn't have televisions. They didn't have TV. Well, we broadcast the gospel over TV. Because they didn't have TVs back then, does that mean that we shouldn't do that today? They didn't have prayer rooms back then. They prayed in, they prayed in rooms, but they didn't have prayer rooms. And there's miracles that happen in the prayer room. Well, uh, there are not prayer rooms in the Bible. We must not be, we shouldn't do that. Our orthodox thinking can hinder what God wants to do in a new and exciting way. Do you believe that? You know, so sometimes the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had all the scriptures down, but they missed, they missed Jesus because he came with what they weren't looking for. Our religion, our knowledge of scriptures can prevent us from an exciting life of faith walking with, walk, walking with Jesus. Not that it goes against the word, but it's not exactly seen in the word. You see that? You see what I'm saying? Let's look at the life of Elijah. Look over in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. This will be the text. I'm going to read just uh, 1 through 16. And then we're going to go back and talk about it. And Elisha the Tishbite, who was of inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be done, there shall not be due nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that it was before Jordan. Let me just stop there for a minute. I mean, it takes a lot of guts to go and to tell the king, it's not going to rain unless I tell you it's going to rain. People always got words for you, right? Eh, you know, but to go to the king and tell him, hey, it's not going to rain unless I tell you it's going to rain. Let's go down. Get thee hence, okay, verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank in the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, the phone's ringing, Arise, get thee into Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he rose and went to Zarephath, and when he had came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering sticks, and he called her to, and called to her, and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that, I'm, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of milk shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did as according to the saying of Elijah. She and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of milk wasted not, neither did the cruse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Elijah prophet goes and tells the king, it's not going to rain until I say it's going to rain. 
Elijah, God sends Elijah down to a brook. He says, I want you to go down here. And he says, I've commanded ravens to feed you. Cherub, cherub, where he went, means a, the meaning of that means a cutting away. So God was dealing with cherub, with uh, Elijah. That I commanded ravens to feed you there. What's, what's interesting about that? is that ravens run clean birds. Lord, why didn't you send doves? Why didn't you send some, a clean bird to feed me? You sent ravens to feed me. If he had not been sensitive to God's voice, his orthodox ways would have got him in trouble and he wouldn't have got provided for how God wanted to meet his need. Sometimes our orthodox thinking hinders God from meeting our needs because he wants to do it in an unorthodox way. Do you see what I'm saying? God met his need in an unorthodox way, something that a Jew wouldn't usually do. He ain't going to be dealing with unclean animals. But God wanted to meet his need. We as Christians question God at times on how he wants to meet our needs. We need to not question, we, need, we question the delivery system. We need to look past the delivery system and consider the source. The delivery system may be unorthodox, not what we're expecting, but unless we're sensitive to the voice of the Spirit, we can miss it. There are many times in our lives as believers, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, in relationships, that God will deal with us in an unorthodox way. We need to look past the delivery system and see the source. Amen? Our source is not the job that we work at. Our source is God. Amen? Our source is not Diana Liptak praying for me. She's just the delivery system. Amen. And I believe that. But I look right past her and I'm looking for the source. If I have a, 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 a problem in my life, I'm looking past the delivery system and I'm looking to the source is God. Amen? That's just maybe God speaking. <clears throat> that just may be God speaking through that unbelieving. Let me, let me throw something out also controversial. That may be God speaking through that unbelieving, heathen doctor telling you that you need an operation. But doesn't the word say that we'll lay hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover? Certainly does. Certainly does. But God can also speak through people and tell you something that's very practical that you need to get done. Amen? Amen. If I break my elbow, I'm going to the doctor. Amen, Kathy? I'm going to the doctor. Now, I've heard people, I heard uh, one sister, she didn't want to go to, she didn't want to use uh, Nova, not Nova came, but for broke something for her, she broke her arm, didn't want to go through anesthesia because it went against God. She broke her arm, didn't want to, Hey, if I break my arm, I'm going to the doctor for him to set my arm. Sometimes it'll take some unbelieving, unorthodox, some lousy, foul-mouthed doctor to say, hey, you need to get an operation. You got a problem here. Oh, no, I'm trusting God. Well, that's good. But you make sure you're sensitive to what God is speaking to you at that moment. I've seen a lot of people say they're trusting God until they got too bad into it, and all of a sudden they're running to the doctor. You're either all in or you're not all in. Right? Is that the way it's supposed to be? Well, I'm going to take a prescription, but I'm only going to take part of it because I'm trusting God. Why don't you trust God for the other half too? I'm only going to take, it says take two Tylenol. I'm only going to take one because I'm trusting God. Boy, you're getting a little quiet. And I'm not saying I don't believe in healing. 
I don't say that I, and I'm going to get prayed for after because I got some situations going on. It's not that I don't believe in it. I'm just saying you need to be sensitive because sometimes God's going to move in an unorthodox way. I believe in laying on the hands of the sick. Yes, it does. I believe that we don't... Uh, well, where am I at here? I'm getting wild here. God can heal you. Think about this. God can heal you with no one laying hands on you. Is that true? God can speak a word to you through someone to bring a heal, physical healing in your life. By just speaking a word to you. You know, God can even use the money-hungry televangelists on television to pray for you over the TV and you can receive a healing. God can even use modern medicine at times to touch you and to heal you. I believe that. The Bible says, but without faith... It's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is the source. No matter how that healing comes, no matter how that financial blessing comes, no matter how that emotional healing comes, no matter how whatever relationship healing comes, it comes from God. We miss him because we put him in a box. God, you got to do it a certain way. And because God did it a certain way, maybe a miraculous way in the past, our focus is not on God. Our focus is on the, what he, the way he did it in the past. He can do it however he wants to. He wants to surprise us. It's a walk with Jesus. It's a walk with God. If he planned it all out, then we would just go A, B, C, D. No, he wants us to walk with him. He wants us to listen for his voice. Say, this is the way. Walk ye in it. You probably heard this before, but I'm going to read it anyways. <clears throat> One day, a very religious man is praying at home when suddenly it says, Tsunami. How do you say that? Tsunami. Okay, thank you. He climbs to the roof of his house to avoid the floods and starts praying to God to save him. Oh, God, I've worshipped you all my life. I'm not ready to die. Please save me from the flood. After a few minutes of this, a guy on a rowing boat sees the man in distress and calls out, Hey, I'm looking for survivors. Hop on. Let's get out of here. No thanks, replied the religious man. I have faith that God in prayer will save me. The man on the boat leaves him to his prayers and rows off. The religious man keeps praying for God to save him, all the while the floodwaters are rising. After a few minutes, the Coast Guard speedboat shows up and pulls up alongside the man on the roof. Come on, yelled the Coast Guards. The flood is getting worse. We need to go now. No thanks, replied the man. I have faith that God will rescue me. So the Coast Guard also leaves. The water has now reached the man's feet, and his prayers are getting more and more frantic. He suddenly hears an army helicopter overhead that hovers above him, sends down a rope and yells for him to climb up. No thanks, replied the man. All I need is faith in God. He will rescue me. The helicopter then leaves. A few minutes later, the water has risen and the man drowns. Upon appearing at the gates of heaven, he sees God and asks, God, have I not been faithful to you all my life? Why did you leave me to drown at my time of need? God replies, I sent two boats and a helicopter. What more did you need? We need to look past how it's going to happen and look to him who's going to make it happen. In verse 7 it says, And it came to pass after a while the brook dried up because there had been no rain in there. It's apparent to anyone that's been working in recent years the jobs or professions that seemed to be so secure a few years ago are now in jeopardy. Is it true? It's nothing that you've done and wrong. It's just life. It's just like, but I worked so hard at that job. It's just what it is. I just heard on the internet, uh, uh, on the radio the other day, they were talking about how many jobs the internet has eliminated. Think about that. It's just what it is. It's not always sin or unbelief that you find yourself in a tight spot. 
it's living in this world. The brook dried up. God told him to go do something else. Look in verse 9. It says that I've commanded a widow, a widow woman to sustain thee. It's important to be at the right place at the right time. We miss God oftentimes because we're not at the right place at the right time. God can, is not only using unexpected ways to meet our needs in our lives, but actually commands it to happen. He said that I've commanded a widow woman to feed. God, why don't you pick somebody that got a lot of money? This woman ain't got no money. God not only wanted to bless Elijah, but wanted to bless this woman as well. Amen? Verse 10. It says, and he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the woman. She changed from a widow woman to the widow, to the widow woman. He says, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. There was a drought in the land. There wasn't much water there. But she went, she, the widow was acting on obedience. Elijah encouraged her to give him something to eat as well, even though she had little to offer and would affect her and her son. She reacted. She acted on the word of the Lord through Elijah and reaped the benefit, the Bible says, many days. God not only wanted to bless Elijah, he wanted to bless this widow woman. Think about this. She had nothing but a little bit, a little bit of water, Little bit of meal, and Elijah says, go make me a cake first. You got to hear from God to tell somebody to do that, don't you? You got to hear what God is saying. You got to be sensitive to God. And, she was, and Elijah was sensitive, and she was sensitive as well. Through obedience, she went and did it. And God not only blessed Elijah, but the Bible says he blessed her for many, many days. Many days. Just look at the many ways used, under orthodox ways, that God uses to accomplish his purpose. He talked through, to, through a donkey to Balaam. Is that an unorthodox way of God speaking to you? He spoke through a donkey. God might want to speak to you through your jackass brother-in-law. <laughs> right? He might have a word for you at a time, right? He might want to speak through a jackass preacher to you sometime and speak a word to you. You don't know. God can use whatever way he wants to, to get his message across. It's not an orthodox. It doesn't make sense. Hey, God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really shake him up. I'm going to speak through a donkey to Balaam. I'm going to speak through a donkey. They'll be talking about this for years. God used a serpent. He said, he said, uh, he told Moses and Aaron, he said, put a snake on a pole and put it up there and people are going to be healed when they look at it. What? A snake? Wasn't the snake the one that got tripped up Adam and Eve? I want you to do this anyways. Now we look back and we know it was looking towards Christ, but think about it back then. Man, that's pretty unorthodox, isn't it, God? But he did it. He told Elisha, he said, throw a stick. A guy, they had a school of the prophets. A guy said, hey, I was using an axe, said it was borrowed. It fell into the water. Elisha takes a stick, throws it into the water. And the Bible says that the iron head didn't float. He said it actually swam. Is that a word? Swam. It actually swam. Think about that. Is that unorthodox? It certainly is. God told Ezekiel, he said, I want you to cook your food. I'm going to send a message. I want you to cook your food with human dung. Is that unorthodox? Elijah, uh, uh, I mean, Ezekiel said, hey, Lord, man. He said, I've been cleaned this whole time. I don't, I can't, that's a little bit too much for me to handle. God said, okay, you use cow dung. It's true. Read it. Is that unorthodox? 
It is, but that's the God we serve. We can't put him in a box. He wants to get something across to us. He wants to get us across to a dying world. You think just a little bit of sermon is going to make a difference in people's life? They hear so much all the time. They're, they're bombarded with things. We need a supernatural move in the word of God to make a difference in people's lives. Even if it seems unorthodox to us, we need to be sensitive to what God is saying so it can bring a difference in deliverance in people's lives. Let's not put God in a, oh God, you got to do it this nice, easy way. We want our loved ones to get saved and to serve God, but we want them to do it easy. Sometimes the harder the head, the bigger the hammer. God told Joshua, he says, I want you to march around Jericho once a day for six days. On the seventh day, he said, also, I don't want nobody talking. Because you can talk yourself out of them miracles. Is it true? I don't want you, I want you guys talking. You guys are going to talk yourselves out of this thing. Oh, well, we're marching around here. Boy, six days. What are you going to do after the march? I don't know. I'm going to go relax. He said, I want you to march six days, seventh day. I want you to march around seven times. And I want you to blow the trumpet. I want you to yell. He said those walls are going to come tumbling down. Unorthodox. But that's the God that we serve. Jesus told the disciples after he taught, he said, cast the net on the right side. We fished all night, haven't caught anything. You're casting it the wrong place. Cast it on the right side. Peter comes to Jesus. Hey, the tax collectors are after us. Government just approved millions and millions of more dinero to come and get our tax evaders. You guys heard that on? Okay. <clears throat> Peter said, hey, they're after us, Lord. We need to pay our taxes. Jesus says, really? Go down. Go fishing. Now, Peter was an experienced fisherman. I want you to go down, cast in the line, pull out a fish, pulls out a fish, finds a coin in the mouth. I'm sure Peter caught thousands of thousands of fish over the years, but he never found a coin in its mouth. God worked in an orthodox way to meet their need at that time. Name of the leopard. It was a heathen commander. was told by a captive young girl about Elisha who could cure him of his leprosy. He sends him, he sends, he goes to the king there and says, hey, I, I heard you have a guy here that can heal me. The king said, oh, he's upset because he said, hey, he's trying to pick a fight with us. And, he's, and they said, no, Elisha can make it happen. So Elisha goes, he goes to Elisha. Elisha doesn't even bother going out and see him. He just tells his messenger, go tell him to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Guy gets hot under the collar. He says, I ain't going to do that. He says, there's rivers just as good where I came from. Somebody said, hey, if he'd have asked you to do something tremendous, wouldn't you go do it? Yeah, I guess I would have. I'm going to go down there. Dip seven times. Came up clean. An unorthodox, an unorthodox way. A meeting his need. God told the children of Israel, he says, I tell you what I want you to do. I'm going to go through and I'm going to kill the firstborn. I'm going to send a death angel through. I want you to put blood on the doorpost. Upper doorpost and the doorpost. And when the death angel sees it, it'll pass over. If you're not open to, to it, God can use you in an unorthodox way to touch other people. Do you believe that? God can use you as well. I had a dream that's been a couple years ago now to a guy that was a friend, but not a close friend, just a friend. You know, just somebody I might talk to every couple years. And I dream about him. And I said, uh, in the dream, I remember, I, I said, uh, God, what do you want me to tell Tim? 
You tell Tim that doubles and triples are good, but singles are great too. So I called this Tim. I said, I had a dream about you. He said, uh oh. Uh oh. I said, I told him that. I said, God told me to tell you that doubles and triples are good, but, but uh, singles are great too. I talked to him a couple weeks ago. He said, uh, he asked me, he said, are you hitting them singles? I said, yeah, I kind of forgot what I even said. You know, I told him that. He said, yeah, my business, I started out, I had 200 customers. He said, I got 1,200 now. He's hitting them singles. You don't know, do you? You just don't know. I talked to a guy a few years ago. And just in a conversation, I mentioned to him the scripture verse that says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Didn't think anything about it. And you know, sometimes you question in your mind, am I doing really what God wants me to do, or am I just enjoying life? And I saw him at a golf fundraising outing, and, I, and he quoted me the scripture, Psalm 37, 23. I couldn't even remember. He said, remember 37, 23? I, I think I said I did, but I probably didn't. But uh, Psalm 37, 23, he said, you know, he said, I've signed a thousand autographs and I put 37, 23 on all of them. That the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You don't know, do you? God can use the unorthodox ways to meet your need and to walk through, to go through you to meet the needs of others. We need to be sensitive to his voice. He may want us to say something very unusual to somebody. And they're going to think, huh? But down the road, God's going to use it. God may want you to give somebody something. Why would you want me to do that? Lord, why would you want me to give them money? They already got more money than I do. You don't know. Is it true? God may want you to go and pray for that one that wouldn't want prayer before. You go and you pray for them. And God uses that prayer to touch them and to touch many. God may call you to go on a mission field, mission trip, not knowing how to speak Spanish, maybe not having any physical skills, not knowing too much about the word. But God calls you to do it anyways. And you see the fruit of that in the future. We need to be sensitive to him. We serve an unorthodox God that wants to move through our lives and touch the world. We need it today, don't we? I think we need it today more than ever. We need to be sensitive to him because just going through the status quo ain't going to make it happen anymore. The Bible says, they that know their God shall do exploits. We need to know our God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Could the worship team come? Linda and I were in Honduras many years ago. I think it was Honduras or Guatemala several years ago. And we asked, there was a missionary there. And we asked him why these people were so sick. I said, because they've been sleeping on the ground. And God birthed in our spirit about going and supplying mattresses to people. I mean, ain't too spiritual mattresses and beds. Wouldn't it be more spiritual to give beds or scripture verses? Or just, but that's kind of the way we we're led into that. And since then, God birthed that, and it's we're not the source, we're just the channels. We're able to to supply mattresses in 20 different, over 20 different countries because just that word, an unorthodox word at us at that time. Let's all stand.